Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm once again diving into the world of Stable Diffusion and Dream Booth, but this time I'm taking a look at the Diffusers version of it. So remember the Q&A at the end of my last video where I mentioned what you do if you've got less than 24 gig of VRAM? Well, th this is what you do. This is what you do. You can either click on the link in that last video or have a look through all this stuff here, which is basically that, that last link. So I'm, I'm showing you how to do that last link in there. So stuff you're going to need. There's two versions of it. If you're going to be connecting to your free Linux host via Google Colab, then all you need is a web browser. Yes, you can you can even get away with doing it from your iPad if you want, but I'd, I'd probably use a computer anyway, so you can download stuff. If you're going to run it on your local PC, you'll need Linux to run the extra fast accelerated version, or you can run a much, much slower version on Microsoft Windows. And for this, you're going to need an NVIDIA GPU with about half the requirements in VRAM. So about 12 and a half gig of VRAM is all you need now. And of course you'll need about 16 gig of RAM to run all the stuff as well. Python, I use Anaconda because that gets everything installed quickly and easily. You're also going to need a hugging face log on so you can get your token and some images to train with. Now top tips for watching this video, have a run through it first, just go all the way through to the end just watching it so you understand what's going on and what you need to do and then when you watch it again afterwards you can pause it and go all right yeah because some of these commands do take quite a long time to run uh, over 20 minutes in some case so if you're going to be running it locally then you can open your anaconda prompt now but i'm going to go through the google colab stuff first because this is free and you don't need much of a computer to run this so there's a couple of colabs that you may be interested in the first one is the hugging face diffusers one so let's have a quick look at the hugging face diffusers one so here is hugging face now this you can use for fine tuning stable diffusion for diffusers users however when i tried to run this using colab free it did give me an out of memory this doesn't have the acceleration in it does have the 8 bit bit in but it doesn't have the acceleration in so it's a little bit slower and it did give me an oom um. so yeah not not sure what's going on with that one but if you want to use that one that does have the advantage of down here, you can change things to your, uh, here we go. So you can save your newly created concept and go into the concepts library. So if you're not doing training, if you're just doing inference, and there's an inference one here as well. And this one should hopefully use a lot less VRAM. And here again, you just click on all the cells and here you can pick the model ID from the concepts library. So if you don't want to do any training at all, but you do want to do some fine tuned stuff from Dream Booth, then there's 60 models that you can use there. So yeah, as you can see, you pick the name from there. So SD Dream Booth, whatever it is that you want. And you can put that into the inference there, SD Dream Booth, run that, and then you can get some images and stuff out. So there is an example of SKS toy inside a ramen bowl. That looks nice and weird. Or here is another example of SKS toy floating in a ramen bowl. Yeah, that looks exceptionally weird, doesn't it? Brilliant stuff. So we're going to be having a look at this one, however, instead, because this is a model with transformers, which has memory efficient flash attention and uses just 17.7 .7 gig of VRAM with no loss in precision at all. Or to reduce VRAM, this is a bit we're interested in, isn't it? To reduce VRAM to 12 and a half gig, we're going to use the 8-bit Adam flag and the optimizer there from bits and bytes. So this is the Colab that we're interested in. This one worked for me in, in Colab free. Open in Colab. That will take you over here. Have a quick run on this one. What have we got? We've got a Tesla T4 and that has just 15 gig of VRAM in it. So that's brilliant. So now you click all the cells one at a time. I, of course, have already run this because these do take a long time to run there's a lot of downloads so you click on that that will download as you can see you got all the things there click on the next one that will download that will do all the things there then you want to log into your hugging face so you click play on that one that will give you a little link to copy a token from your hugging face login page so you'll have to have your hugging face account you log in there then you can copy your token pop it back in here paste your token there click login and with any luck, that should log us in. There you go, login successful. Your token has been saved, brilliant. Okay, so now just before you run this one, you'll need to set these. It'll be SKS by default, that's fine. You can use SKS if you want. It does happen to be a sort of weaponry, so I, I would change the, uh, the 
the name of things there but you know the main thing you want to set here is your class name so i am using these images here so i have set the class for face and so once you've clicked play on that that will create these directories over here so you just click on that folder directory and that will pop open there and then all you have to do is select your images drop them into the folder and that will upload them all for you or as it says there you can click play and that will give you a file manager to upload but it's a it's a bit slower it's much easier just to drag and drop the images in there so you're almost ready to start training so you're almost ready to click the next play button but before you do you want to change that token there or well, you can leave it as sks by default but you know if, if you want to change it to something else then you can so there it is you can change that then you click play and that will take a very long time it took about 20 minutes for me as you can see it does a lot of downloading there's some big image files there and it does run the 800 steps which took about 19 minutes and 39 seconds so quite a long time uh, you, that means you may want to save it to your google drive so there is the optional step to save that to your google drive you have to connect your google drive of course then click that step and that will save everything onto your drive so you don't have to download it all again and you, you've also got your model saved on your google drive then as well and then you are ready to do inference so you just click play on that and that will load the model from your output directory so if we have a quick look here you've got the models there's my output directory so that's all the stuff that it loads it's got the, the vae there and the unit and the tokenizer and all these bits and pieces so that will load that up then once that has finished spinning you can change this seed if you want uh, can set random seed here for reproducibility let's just click play on that once once that top cell is finished that next one will finish and then you are ready to do your thing so whatever you set as your prompt up here so we'll go all the way up here so photo of an sks class name so i did an sks face so that's photo of an sks face digital painting and if we run this prompt here oops there we go then that will generate, I've set it to two samples just for speed. That takes about uh, 14 seconds per thing, but we'll get two images, photo of an SKS, digital painting. Do, 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 do. Watch the little bar go up. Yes, and we'll get our paintings out, the, the photo painting. There we go. Are we going to get her? Is she going to appear? Yes, there we go. So we've got our digital paintings. So they're an excellent, excellent representation of her as a digital painting. So there we go. There we go. Everything done for free on Google Colab using that rather excellent repository there. So what next? Well, it's, it's the local install. Yes, you can run all this locally as well. And if you're using Linux, it is exceptionally fast. It takes about 10 minutes on a 3090. So we're going to be using this version here as well. It's exactly the same thing that we just saw, but we are going to be doing it locally. So here we have running it locally. And here are all the commands. So basically you want to run the Git clone. If you don't have Git already on Linux, you will want to apt install Git and that will get you Git. So you Git clone, then you change directory into the examples directory in there. So here I am over here, whoopsie. So I've got my uh, diffusers Shivam examples dream booth and i've got all the uh, bits and pieces there and then uh, you want to pip install torch so i do that first now for that you can go to the pytorch website and install and it's locally pip cuda 11.6 and there's the one you want to copy and paste so you can just copy and paste that in and that will help you install pytorch there we go I'll take a few seconds, I'll download PyTorch and install all that for you. So we've got that. Then you want to pip install the Shivam diffusers version there as well. We'll pop that in, pip install that. Yeah, that'll download and install all the things. Then you can, you know, you know what to do. You just copy and paste all these commands. Now, the one that will take a very long time is this one here. That takes about 20 minutes to compile. So you might want to go and have a cup of tea while Transformers is installing. Uh, now, if you're using Microsoft Windows, then you can't use that. You'll use this one instead. So we open up this hyperlink and this is exactly the same thing, but this isn't accelerated or uh, it, it does have the 8-bit. I think it's got the 8-bit option. There you go. So you can train on a 16 gig GPU there. So this isn't twice as fast. This is a much slower one, but you can still run it 
on a 16 gig GPU. So a big leap down from the 24 gig requirement of the other one. All right, so let's have a quick look back in here. Now, you will also then need to run uh, Accelerate Config. And when you run Accelerate Config, you will need to answer some questions. So we're just gonna run that now. There we go. So I'm running it on this machine, zero. I'm not doing any distributed training because I'm like that. I'm not training on the CPU. I'm not using deep speed. And I'm gonna use BF16 because I have a 3090. So there you go. You've done the Accelerate Config, and then you need to do your Hugging Face CLI login again, much the same as with the Google Colab. Paste in your token, and you are done. So that's it. There's, there's your setup, and you are ready to start training. Now, there is, as you can see in here, a launch.sh script ready to go. So what I did was I copied that one. I copied that one because it's a little bit easier and I called it my training. So here it is, there you go. So you do want to, you do want to change a few little bits in here. So the model name, we're keeping it the same. Uh, the instance directory, I'm training it on my face. Class directory, I've got some class face samples in there. And then the output directory, that's where I'm going to be saving the model. So much like in the Google Colab version, you're setting all those bits and pieces in there. Now you will, of course, also, if you're down here, down here, down here, if you're doing it on a 16 point, well, you can get it down to 12.5 gig with the 8-bit optimizer. So you copy and paste that bit in instead there, and you've got the 8-bit Adam there. So that will help bring the VRAM requirements down quite a lot. Excellent. So there it is. You can just run that command. So don't forget to make it executable. So for example, pop that in there, my training, and then you can just run it. And that will take about 10 minutes on a 3090. It's about half the speed of the, uh, half, half the time required from that, uh, from that Google Colab. So that will eventually, after 10 minutes, get you your model files out. So if I have a quick look at that, I'll have exactly the same thing as we had in the collab. So remember in the collab, we've got these models and that's where you're going to point it to. So we've got the models over here as well. Stable diffusion, there's my diffusers and there it is. So we've got the same sort of thing there, feature extractor and the logs and the VAE and the UNet. So that is the directory copy that you're going to need for the inference as well. So inference is also on this page here. Oops. So if you scroll down to the bottom, Inference, there it is. So you want to copy and paste that. So I copied and pasted that into a new file. So like we've got here, copy the inference code such as inference.py. So there we go. I called it inference.py because that's that's my name, inference.py. And then the model ID, there you go. That's where you saved it. So that's your output directory. Yeah, that is your output directory. So where, whatever you set for the output directory up here, there it is, output directory. Yeah, okay, so that's what you're gonna put in the inference. And then you will also want to change the prompt as well. So I've got a photo of SKS face in the style of Van Gogh, and that will create output.png. I just happen to change the image save bit as well. So if we run that, we can just do python inference.py. There we go, paste that in. And this will take a few seconds, but we will eventually get our output. So we go to the examples, dream booth, and then got Python inference running. There we go, running 51 steps. Takes a few seconds. And then we get our output. And there is a picture of me in the style of Van Gogh. Isn't that excellent? That is pretty excellent. Now, you can also have a little bonus here as well. A little bonus for those that uh, like to play with things locally is you can also use infinite canvas as well with this model because this is a diffusers version. So if we have a look at this one, here is Stable Diffusion Infinite Canvas. You can also run this in Colab as well. So if you save that thing to your Colab directory, if you've got a, got a G drive in there, you can, you can play with this on Google Colab, but I'm gonna be playing with it locally. So there it is, as you can see, we'll just have a quick play on that. You can basically draw your pictures and then expand them out. It's, it's infinite, infinite out painting. And it is quite good, it is quite good. So there are a few little extras that you need to install in here. Like it says here, there's a few little extras. Now that does conda, but you can just do pip. Basically you just need that one line there. So you pip install JupyterLab, 
IPy widgets, IPy canvas, and OpenCV Python. And then you can just run Jupyter Lab. So let's do that. Let's do that. Here we go. So I'm using the, the same one, of course. This is my diffusers anaconda environment. I mean, you do Jupyter Lab, that's going to open up this. And then you want to open the stable diffusion infinity one over there on the left. So let's open that. Now, this is almost, almost ready to go. But as you can probably see here, you need to set up the stable diffusion in paint pipeline. So exactly like we did with this, this one here, you've got the pipe equals stable diffusion pipeline pre-trained model. And we're, we're setting it to the one that we just trained. Yeah, you're doing exactly the same thing in here. Yeah, so there I am setting it to that same model. And I'm also setting auth token false because I don't need to log on. I don't need to download that from Hugging Face because it, it's on my local hard drive. I've also turned the safety checker off there using that line and also set the feature extractor to false because that prevents us from getting a load of error messages. So once you've changed that, you can click the restart kernel and run all cells. Yes, please. Let's run all those cells. That should go through these and we'll get little numbers appear in those as they run through and do things successfully. So we've got a one, two, and three. We should get a four in a second here once that has run through. And then we set up the uh, UI control there. Then we get set up a canvas. Here we go. We've got this. You can upload an image if you want, and then you get that. So I can do input your prompt here. So we can do a photo of an SKS face in the style of Van Gogh. And then when we do outpaint there, that will load in the model from my hard drive and it should. Yes, there we go. So we have me and we can do a little bit of in painting as well. So if I put it there, for example, and sorry, outpainting even <laughs> and select outpaint, then I can make the model a bit bigger. And look at that. Look at that. And that's so that's that's how you can make some really cool stuff. You can make some really cool stuff there. Will it give me a head? Will it, will it, will it finish it off? Sort of, sort of. Let's, let's redo that again, shall we? <laughs> will it give me a normal head? It, it's, it's giving me a Homer Simpson head. But you can click on all these and you can, you, you know, you can play with it as much as you like. It's just a little bit of fun. There we go. Now we've almost got a normal head. And of course you can export and save that when you're done. So there you go. There you go. Right, that's a little bit of bonus for nerds. So a quick Q&A on this one as well. Can you use any of these files with your automatic 11.11 web UE? No, no, this is all for Hugging Face diffusers. The automatic 11.11 checkpoint one was the previous video about Dream Booth, which kind of unfreezes and does textual inversion. So can you convert these files to the checkpoint format? So you can use it in your 11.11 web UE? No, no, not that I know of, but maybe one day maybe one day but can i convert my checkpoint files into the diffusers format yes that that way around actually works so maybe if you're a complete nerd you can make this from diffusers back back into the original version but there is a script that you can run to change into the diffusers version so you, you can go one way but not the other yet so are there any good free diffusers based GUIs like the automatic 1111. So you can use that model and, and do all the in painting and out painting and all the cool stuff and all those different resolutions. And no, no, not that I'm aware of. So if you do know of something like the 1111 web UI that works with the diffusers stable diffusion, then do let me know because that will be good to play with. Uh, and can you run this on Microsoft Windows? Um, I don't, well, yes, you can, you can run that slow one. You can run the slow one. Um, Transformers does compile on a Mac, but as to whether it runs, I don't know. I haven't got a Mac to test. Uh, and maybe, maybe one day Transformers will run on Windows, but right at the moment, you're going to have to use the slow one. Uh, so for the most part, if you've got a Mac, uh, then just, just use your Google Colab because that will get everything done. So there you go. Now let's give another couple of links uh, that you can click on to learn even more things, shall we? Yeah. All right. Let's